Hello and welcome to A Throne of Games. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Super Hot by Boards and Dice. So we'll have a quick overview. We're going to get set up the game, run through the rules, and then at the end we'll play a couple of rounds just so you can get the feel of the game. Over the course of three levels of difficulty, you create a deck of cards with the abilities to keep your enemies at bay, stop yourself getting shot, and achieve your objectives. If you ever end up with four bullet cards in your hand, then you lose the game. If you ever end up with no cards to draw from, then again you lose the game. To win the game, you complete three levels, each level with more objectives. Complete the third level with three objectives and you win. To set up for a one player game, do the following. First of all, get your player one cards, shovel them up and place them in the player deck. Secondly, Take your bullet cards and place them in the bullet deck. Third, take your objective cards, shuffle them and place them in the mission deck. As we're playing the first level of the game, we can turn over the first objective. If we don't want to do this objective, we can veto it. However, remember that you'll have to play that mission next level. If you decide to veto it on the next round, this is going to go to the top of the mission pile and you'll have to draw it again and you cannot veto it the second time. Next, take the obstacles deck. Now something that's not mentioned in, uh, well it's mentioned towards the end of the rule book is that when you first start playing it's recommended that you don't include the baseball bat cards. So as you get better at playing the game you can insert these cards into the obstacle deck and remove the same number of gun cards to make it a, a more challenging game. So for now we'll leave these out. These cards get placed in the obstacles deck but before we do that, we draw nine cards from the bottom of the deck and shuffle in one bullet card. Put them at the bottom of the obstacles deck and put it in its place. Next, we draw six cards from the obstacles deck to form our line. And finally, we draw the top four cards from the player deck to form our hand. Now we're ready to play. In the first step of the game, we decide whether we are going to move or wait. Now, when we move, the advantages are that we get to destroy cards in the line. The good thing about this is these cards are going to end up in our hand, which gives us more powers. The downside is we're going to be using cards in the line. This advances time and time is not on our side in this game. The other option is to wait. The advantage of this is time moves more slowly, however we don't access any benefits from gaining the cards into our hand and also all these cards are going to activate doing us damage. If we decide we're going to move, we look at the cards in our hand and we see which cards we can either destroy or knock out. There's two different things you can do. Destroying a card, which will put the card into your new card area and then the next turn into your hand so you can use it or you can knock out a card in which case you simply flip the card over. This will be useful 
for removing a card um, from play without it ending up in your hand in the next turn. In more detail, to be able to uh, destroy or knock out a card, then you need to equal or beat the number here at the bottom of the cards. So if I wanted to um, destroy the dude with a gun, I'd have to look at my hand and look at these top numbers. So I can see this one, the shotgun, and this one, the gun, both have the like enough strength to be able to uh, destroy this card, and they're the same type. They need to be the same type to be able to do that. So let's say I spent this card. I'll use that up, put it in my used area, and I can be able to remove this and put that in my new card area. If I wanted to knock out the dude with a katana, then I'm going to need a total score of four, but I can use both the red uh, fighting and also the gray triangle dodge moves. So I can look here and I can see that if I played these two cards, then I'd be able to beat that. Next, if I wanted to destroy the bullet, now I can only destroy the bullet, I can't knock it out like I did with the katana, you can't flip it over, you have to destroy it. And for that I'm going to need two defense. And here I have that, so I could play this card to remove the bullet. Unlike other destroyed cards that would go into my new cards area, bullets will go into the bullet deck if they are destroyed. So in this example, I'm going to use all four of my points, so three fighting points and one dodge point, to be able to take out this card, the, the briefcase. So the briefcase goes in my new cards area, and the used cards go in the used card area. The next step is the uh, refill my hand stage. So there actually aren't any cards in my hand this time. Um, so the first thing I do is take any cards in the new card area. And then if I still have fewer than four cards, which in this case I do, I draw up to four from the player deck. And here's my new hand. If at any point I couldn't draw from the player deck because it had run out, then I'd be able to shuffle any cards in my player discard pile and create a new player deck. If I was still short of cards and there were no more cards in my player discard pile, then I've lost the game. The next stage is the maneuvers phase. In this phase, I take the cards from my used card area and count them. One, two, three, four. I can then remove cards from that many spaces along the line going from right to left. So in this case, I could remove all four of these cards. In another example, here I've used four cards. So I can remove cards from the first four spaces. Now note here, I've already destroyed the card. However, this space still counts. So I'm not removing four cards. I'm removing the cards, if I can, from the first four spaces. Face up cards go into the player discard pile. Bullets would go straight into my hand. Face down cards would go to the obstacle discard pile. So face up to the player discard, bullets into the hand, and face down to the obstacle discard. As these cards were all face up cards, they go into my player discard pile. Once this is done, I can take the cards from my used card area and they move into my obstacle discard pile. The next step, step five, is to check goals. So I read what my goal is and I see if I've successfully completed that objective. If I have, 
then I'm able to flip it face down. Now, once all the objectives for a level are flipped face down, then you've completed that level and you're able to move on to the next stage. So, in the uh, first level of the game, you only get one objective, so you just need to do that one, and then you'll be able to move on to the next phase. If, there were, if you're on level two, then you'd have to keep going until you were able to flip both of them. Step six is the obstacle ability stage. So we look down the line and look for any obstacle abilities. In this case, I've only got one card left, and this obstacle doesn't have an ability when it's in the line. So this time, nothing happens. Let's take the opportunity to look a little closer at these cards. So this card, when it's in the line, is going to cost you uh, three to be able to, to destroy it. And it gives you this ability where X is the number of cards in your player discard pile. So this is a, a card that can get um, stronger depending on how many cards you have in the discard pile. So these actions at the top are actions that you use when they're in your hand. Any actions at the bottom are actions that would happen during the, uh, the obstacle abilities phase. Next one here is the pliers. Again, no action during the obstacle abilities phase, but if it was in your hand, you can use it to heal a bullet from your hand or draw a card. So that's a useful power. Next one is the, the punch, the unarmed dude. So the unarmed dude, when it's uh, in the line, um, it says, if another enemy shoots, then it also gets a shot off. So this is going to do damage to you. I'm uh, going to do one bullet's damage to you if there are any other enemies with guns in the line that haven't been dealt with. It's the dodge card. The briefcase. Again, no ability in the line. However, um, if you play this card during the, um, the using cards phase, then it allows you to use another card twice. So this is the dude with a katana card. So it says here, so if this is um, in, the, in the line, when you do the obstacle ability phase, it says discard a card from your hand except a bullet. And if it is in your hand and you can use it, then you can use it either as you, it's normal to attack, um, or it can be used to destroy a flying bullet, so a bullet in the, in the line. So that's uh, a very useful card to have. Next is the, the gun, or the dude with the gun. So when it's in the line it's, um, and it activates, it's going to do you one bullet damage. And the shotgun will do you two bullets damage. Now with cards with the bullet symbol on them, if they activate during the obstacle, um, the obstacle ability stage, then this is going to fire off two shots, two bullets like this. You're going to take them from the bullet deck and you're going to add them to the obstacle discard pile. So they're not going to do you damage straight away, but over time they're going to work their way into your player deck and then into your hand. If at any stage the last bullet comes out of the bullet deck, then the game's over, you've lost. Step seven is refilling the line. So any cards that are still remaining in the line, move along to the start, and we draw new cards to fill the gaps from the obstacle pile. If at this stage there wasn't enough cards in the obstacle pile to draw from, then you can take the deck from the obstacle discard pile, shuffle it, and reform a deck for you to draw from. If at any stage there's also no cards in the discard pile, so you can't complete a line, then you lose the game. And now we're back to step one of choosing whether we want to move or wait. 
Let's say in this time I actually want to wait rather than move. What I can do then is look at my hand and decide if there's any cards I want to discard for whatever reason. And in which case I discard a card into the um, obstacles discard pile. I can discard as many cards as I want that way, but I can't discard bullets. Next, I'd be able to take the first card from the line, so it's always going to be card number one, and this card goes into the player discard pile. At this stage, you'd, you'd skip straight to step six, which is the obstacle abilities. So you do all the, uh, all the abilities at the bottom of these cards, and then you'd refill the deck and go on to the next round of the game. When you've achieved the objectives, then it's time to move on to the next level of the game. So, one is uh, place all the completed goals at the bottom of the mission deck. Two, take all the cards from the line, the obstacle deck and the obstacle discard. Shuffle them together and lay out a new line. Three, take your player discard pile, your player deck and your hand, put them together, shuffle them up, draw a hand of four new cards and put the rest in the player deck. Finally, draw a number of goals equal to the level you're playing. So let's say we're on level two, you put out two goals. But you can't veto the one you vetoed last time. And if you do veto it, it's going to go back on the top of the deck next round. All right then, so I've got the game set up now for um, one player game starting on level one. And we're going to play through a couple of rounds to see how it goes. So um, first thing is I'm going to consult my, my mission and it says uh, three bullets left in the bullet deck. So basically I've got to get my bullet deck down to three. Now that seems a pretty hard thing to do in the, the first level of the game, something I don't want to do anyway, so I'm going to go straight ahead and veto that. And let's pull the new one out. And that says, um, knock out three obstacles in a turn. Okay, that seems something more like something I can do, so let's put that there. Okay, so what can we do? We could use the card to um, destroy or knock out the gun. Um, same for the table. Um, let's go for getting rid of the, uh, the gun. Let's destroy the gun. So the gun goes there. And these two go here, they're being used up. Um, and that's it now. I can't do uh, any other actions uh, in this stage. So the next part of the... Um, the round is to refill my hand, so there's two cards in my hand. I can take the one card from the new cards deck, so that's three, and then I can draw up to four. So there's my fourth card there to form my new hand. Next step is the maneuvers phase, so I look at how many cards that are in the used um, pile. So there's two, that means I can take cards from the uh, first two spaces. So this place is empty anyway, and then I can take one from this space as well, That's the second one, so I'll take that away. And as it was a face-up card, it goes into my, uh, my player discard pile. Next, I check my goals, uh, which I can say I haven't done. I need to have um, three flipped over, in, um, any, well actually any three flipped over to achieve this goal, so I've not done that. And now, obstacle abilities. So... I'm using the, um, the bottom line um, abilities here. So let's go to the first one. Pillar, draw three extra cards. Great, so I can draw three more cards into my hand. Next one is um, shoot. So the dude with a shotgun shoots me. 
So that's uh, two bullet cards. And the bullet cards go into the obstacle discard pile. So they go there and they'll turn up later in the game. Next along the line is the safe space card. So that doesn't do anything for me at this stage. And nor does the bottle, so no changes there. Next step is the refill the line step. So everything moves along to the end of the line. Or the start of the line even. And we pull out two new cards. So dude with a gun. And another safe space card. And last of all, the used cards go into the, um, the obstacle discard pile. And we are ready to start the next round. Right, next round of the game, and I've um, corrected my mistake of, for some reason, thinking that I had to draw three cards. It's draw one extra card, so I've now got the right number of cards in my hand. And we're going to look at what we could knock out and destroy this time. So, we've got um, more useful abilities here. So... The shotgun did me quite a bit of damage last time. I'd quite like to get rid of that this time. So that's uh, one, two, three, four. That will use up all these four cards, but that will remove the shotgun. However, it'll go anyway. Even if I just use two cards, that'll get removed. So maybe I should look further down the line for things that I can remove. Um, so let's use uh, this gun to remove... Destroyed this dude with a gun. Or maybe I should go for trying to, to knock out some obstacles and maybe I should flip this over instead. Uh, we'll wait for doing that a little later into the turn. So let's just destroy more things for now and get more useful cards into my hand. So there's that gone. Um, I could do with getting the pliers. They're useful. So that will require uh, basically all four of my cards be able to get the pliers so it's pretty expensive um, let's go for it so there's those cards used up and I get the pliers and put them into my new cards area now it's time for maneuvers so I've got one two three four five cards in my used card area so hit the cards from five spaces two three four five and they go to the player discard pile. Right then, so let's um, next move the used cards to the object discard pile. Then check for goal. No, definitely not done the, the goal. Um, obstacle abilities, not relevant as they've all been removed. And now we go to refill the line. So we pull out six cards. Oh, one thing I forgot to do was um, give myself a, a new hand of cards. So I've got nothing in my hand at the moment. I used all the cards up. So I take these two from the new cards area. And draw up from my player deck. Now next time, when I draw from my player deck, I'm going to have to um, flip over the cards from the discard pile to form a new player deck. And I need to consider that. I need to consider how many cards are actually going to end up in my player deck and if I'm going to be able to form a hand. Remember, if you can't form a hand of four, then again, you're going to lose the game. And that's it. Uh, we're back to um, starting the, uh, the round again. And the game goes on like this until we either, well, win or lose. And that's super hot. I hope you found this video useful. Just to make things a bit easier for you, I've also put a gameplay um, guide down in the description so you can click that link and it's a nice organised uh, flowchart of how to work through the game. So I hope that's also useful for you. Um, this is my first time making a, uh, a playthrough video like this, a rules video. So if you've got any comments or tips on anything I can improve on, anything you'd like to see, then please, I'd love to know. Anyway. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.